today with Jamie Martin. How are you doing, Jamie? I'm doing well, thanks. That's excellent. Okay, well, why don't we get started by sharing a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, I am a professional organizer, so I help people in their homes and in their offices organizing their lives and organizing their brains. And I've been doing this for 10 years. And I have one son who's 11. I live in Glen Ellen area. And I love to garden and I love to travel. Excellent. So, so what made you get started? I mean, it, there's always unique personalities involved with, especially with your profession. So I'm just yeah. curious how you get started with that. Years ago, I was looking for a business idea that would allow me to make my own schedule. I had been in corporate life for 10 years and just felt like it was a grind and I wasn't enjoying it and I was always on somebody else's schedule. And I was reading a book because there was no real internet at the time and it was about the best home-based businesses for the 90s. And this idea of professional organizer was in there and it intrigued me when I read it because it just sounded like something that I would be a natural at. So um, I investigated at the time, but it was so unknown at the time that I felt like it was going to be too difficult to market initially because nobody had ever heard of it. So I put it on the shelf for a few years. And then after I had my son, I came back to the idea of wanting to work for myself and have my own schedule. And now um, people knew what it was. So I felt like it was the right time to start the business. Excellent. So when you say you're a natural at it, give us some examples. Share why you're that natural person. My parents never had to tell me to clean up my room. It was always just cleaned up and organized. And I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's impossible. <laughs> and I used to uh, balance my parents' checkbook wow. when I was a kid. <laughs> just because wow. I thought it was fun, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so if your checkbook is a penny off, does that send you into some bad place? Out there? Absolutely not. I am all about being organized just enough. Okay. If, the, if, the, if it's 50 cents off or even three bucks or five bucks, I figure the bank's probably right. And I just take their word for it and I make an adjustment and move on. It's not worth it. That's good. That's, that's refreshing too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes it takes a lot of energy to get to that, you know, 99% comfort level. So. Right. Um, so cool. So, you know, what, what makes you, I, I, besides being good at it, like what gets you excited about helping others with your organization skills? Like what, what's there? I just really enjoy when I see my clients feeling so much more relaxed. That's usually the first thing I can see. They're very anxious. The first time I come, you know, they say, Oh, I'm so embarrassed. This is so, so terrible. My disorganization. And I assure them this is not the worst I've seen because it usually isn't. And they're nervous about getting started. And they're very overwhelmed because they just see the massive project and they can't break it down in those small pieces. So that's what I'm there to do is help them focus on one piece at a time, show them a process, work them through it. And, you know, sometimes within 30 minutes, they're, they're saying, oh my gosh, I feel so much better already. And we're not even close to done, but they've made progress and they can see where we're going now. Whereas before I was there, they couldn't even see the light at the end of the tunnel. So it's really rewarding when I can, I can change their lives for the better. Right. So when you say it's probably not the worst situation you've seen, Give us, I mean, sh when you talk about worst, because somebody could be watching and saying, well, I guarantee you I'm the worst you've ever seen. <laughs> so, so what, you know, if you could describe like, you know, the, the typical clients that you have and maybe what that worst client would look like to make mm -hmm. people feel better and hopefully want to use right. it. So I work with a lot of stay-at-home moms who have three or four kids under the age of six and they're overwhelmed with toys and little shoes and coats and backpacks and busy kid schedules that they've already gotten them into lots of classes and trying to cook for everybody and picky eaters and they're just kind of overwhelmed and they're typically they're past professionals so this is just very different for them and they're they're really struggling in that role and um, so that's one of the big client groups I work with the other big group I work with is uh, what I call serial entrepreneurs they have a business, it's their sole income, and they can't just have one business, they have four businesses. And they, they are idea people, and I love them because they're so excited about everything, they're passionate, and it's ideas jumping in their head from every direction, and they can't manage it. It's, it's um, I feel like a lot of times you're either a creative person and you struggle with some of the organization, or you're 
not quite as creative, but you have more of the organization skills. So I try to act as their organizational brain and help them rein it all in and teach them some things. I think anybody can learn it. It's just not necessarily natural to everybody. Right. So um, I won't tell you where I fit in. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking okay in your background there. So you, you chose well then. Yeah, well, I have the camera on like a six foot pedestal, so you can't see the mess on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, if you're working with serial entrepreneurs and, um, you know, how do you, how, what, what are some of the things you do to rein them in? One of the, it's, it's really for that type of work, it's productivity coaching. And we start with talking about what their priorities are in their life and what their priorities are in their business, because that's usually, where they've started um, straying is the everything sounds interesting and so they're jumping from one thing to the next rather than saying is this a priority in my life does this really matter somebody asked me can i run this event well sure i can but do i want to does it match with what i'm trying to do in my life does it match with what i'm trying to do in my business so i'm starting to get them to think those things through and be mindful and then learning how to set boundaries. So if somebody asks you if you want to run this event or coach that team or whatever it is, that you learn how to know when to say no and a few different strategies of how to say no without sounding like a bad guy. Mm. Now once we get through with some of that mind, mindfulness, then usually we'll get into how we're managing email, how are we managing the calendar, how are we managing our tasks. And those are usually the, the more physical manifestations of productivity issues. Sure. So you find one of the major challenges is the ability to, or the inability to say no. Is that That's kind of definitely thing? one of them. Yep. And clear priorities too. Sure. So if I, you know, if I'm one of those people that are sitting out there like that, um, I'm sure it's really hard for them to break down and say, I need help. Um, so how do you make it easy for them? I try to be very approachable. I'm out there on social media and I, I try to have my website be very um, comfortable and approachable so I don't come across as very stiff individual and you know, I hope that they're on my newsletter and seeing me on social media and I try to put my personality into it so that they don't feel like I'm gonna come in and judge them because that's not what I'm there for. Right, exactly. I mean, obviously you're probably 100% driven you know, with, a, with a passionate heart, but you know, in deep, Deep down in their minds, they're probably thinking, wow, I'm embarrassed, you know, so. Sometimes. A lot of the entrepreneurs really have a hard time outsourcing different activities. They want to do it all. They think they should be able to do it all. Right. And so I'm just, like, I'm just the first thing that they're willing to outsource. And that's a great thing because then I can help them think about what else can they outsource. Because when you're a one-man shop or a five-man shop, you can't do it all. And right. they don't want to hire employees, which I am totally understanding of that. But there's tons of services out there like myself or virtual assistants that you can hire marketing companies to handle some of your other sides of your business that you're not necessarily really good at, or they're just not what makes you money. They need to be done, but it's something else somebody can do. Sure, sure. So it sounds like you've done a lot in the past to get yourself in a position where you're pretty good at what you do. Um, what are some of the things that you do to kind of stay on top of your games and stay sharp? Well, one of the things I do, I just did last week, I went to the National Association of Professional Organizers Conference. So that's a three-day event every year that I attend. And there's a variety of classes on different types of organizing and how to run your business, how to market your business. Um, I went to a session this time on various strategies to help people focus. It's, it was geared particularly for people with ADHD, but the strategies work whether you have it or not. Um, I go to local meetings of my professional association almost monthly, and we have different speakers there. Reading a book right now on time management and productivity. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Good. You, you, can, you can't really manage time, can you? <laughs> <laughs> can't manage, can't man make the, there be more than 24 hours in a day, but. You can't do it. Nope. People try, but you can't do yeah. it. <laughs> That's good. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you have an opportunity to kind of reach out um, and, and give some advice to maybe people that were in a similar boat to where you were in when you first started, um, what kind of advice would you share to kind of, you know, get either yourself off on the right foot or, you know, that next person that's contemplating, you know, taking a leap of faith? Well, I would say definitely find 
something that you're passionate about that you enjoy and try to figure out how you can make money at it. Because if you're doing something you enjoy, then it's really not working. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, one of the things I didn't do initially with my business very much was networking. Um, I was doing this part-time initially with a little kid and networking just wasn't going to work for me at the time. But I feel like that's definitely something that if you're really serious and you want to get it going right away, network, look for power partners, people who have related businesses that you can regularly refer to them and they can regularly refer to you rather than just seeking out the one-off referral that might not ever come again with, from that person. Right. That's good advice. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so, you know, we're both a part of the cooperatizing network. That's why we're here. And hopefully, you know, there's lots of people watching this video. Um, and if you have an opportunity to kind of reach out and, and ask for help in any way, shape or form from the group, and maybe you have a way to share, you know, what you can do for the group too. Here's your chance. I mean, what, what do you get to offer? <laughs> Well, I have two different main groups that I work with. As I said earlier, I work with families, overcommitted families. So I'm always looking for opportunities to reach out to groups of, um, usually it's women, um, newcomers groups or moms groups to speak to. Those are a good way for the people in, the, the, in that group to get to know me and feel more comfortable before they bring me into their home. Because it's a pretty personal service. People are, you know, I'm in their house going through their stuff. I'm not really looking for anything interesting, but just have to go through their stuff in order to get them organized. Um, and then the entrepreneurs, people that I think other businesses I would connect well with are, because I do, my clients are always asking me for referrals for other services. It's just, it's a nonstop with the residential and with the business. So um, I'm definitely able to refer other people in a variety of services. The ones that work best for me are um, home stagers, re redesigners, um, realtors, maybe even cleaning service. Cleaning services see the houses that have so much clutter; it's hard for them to clean. Um, so, uh, some you know, sometimes I get asked, "Do you know a lawyer that can help handle this kind of work?" It's you know, random one-offs, but um, sometimes people are looking for household services, technology services, computer services. You know, people who can train them more deeply on Excel or something like that, or virtual assistants is another one. So there's a variety of businesses that I could connect with in this group. Excellent. So if you're one of those, you got to reach out to Jamie. I'm sure uh, right. it would be a great connection. And um, if they wanted to reach out to you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? My business number, 630-561-8018. Okay. And uh, do you have like a website or a Facebook page or? Of course. I have a website and it's D as in dog, E S T O R G dot com. It's just short for destination organization. And there's a link in there where you can email me through my website. And I'm on Facebook and it's destination organization dot I L, I think is the actual address. And I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Google Plus. I'm all over there. Excellent. And I'm sure it's very organized. Yes, very. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I appreciate your time today, today, Jamie. It's been very beneficial. Good. Great. I'm looking forward to get more involved with the group. Yep. And uh, for the rest of you guys, we'll see you online soon. Thanks a lot.